All right. All right, this is a new topic for me, so hopefully I do okay. That's why I'm not sure on the timing, but we'll find out together. So um, I'm Adam Christensen. I do a podcast called The MacCast. I'll give you all my details at the end, so if you want to email me or you have any questions about what I'm talking about, uh, we can, uh, you can follow up with me and find me around here because I'm going to show you some cool stuff. We won't get to play with it too much. Um, I'm also doing a breakout session after this at the end of the day, and I'll give you the info on that. So come back for that, and we're going to do some more like interactive stuff with some of the things that you're going to see here. So that should be a lot of fun. But my talk is called Steam Powered Mac. Does everybody here know what STEM and Steam is? One person. All right, great. That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> um, it's, it's a concept. So you might have heard of Steam, if you, and it sounds like a lot of you hadn't. So it's for education. Um, and it stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Where's Dan? Dan must know STEAM. Where's Dan out here? Anyway, um, so a lot of people, if, if you know about this, you might know about STEM. How many people have heard of STEM? Yeah, see, but not STEAM, right? So the question is, what is that A? You know, what's that A all about? And that A is all about this. A lot of people know about this, right? The intersection of technology and liberal arts, something that Apple is very well known for. And the A is for the arts, because in science, technology, math, and engineering, art is very important as well. So they added art just for a number of reasons. I mean, one of the big reasons is it makes the subjects fun and more approachable. And when you're doing learning, if you can make learning fun, it works a lot better. And I'm uh, just a little background on this. So I kind of got into this topic because one, I'm a tech nerd, but two, um, you know, my kids are in a charter homeschool program. And so we uh, are involved in doing their education. And uh, me being the technology guy, my wife sort of said, you're going to take over the computers and technology stuff. So I've recently started to get into this and play around with it. And the talk is kind of about um, some of the great technologies we have now that make this fun. And in case you're going, well, I don't have kids, you know, I don't know that this is really for me, I'm totally into this stuff because it's toys and it's fun and it's playing and, you know, bringing the art into it makes it really fun. So, you know, creativity and art is really integral to the technical fields. Um, I was think, I think I was telling someone earlier, you know, without this liberal arts part, um, our Macs would be a lot more like PCs, I think, right? <laughs> no, that, that's, my, that's my only little dig at PCs, but uh, yeah, so the art's really important. You know, the design of things, fonts, typography, all this stuff, um, and then bringing that into um, your technology projects. I mean, you're building a piece of hardware, you want to make a great case, you need to, um, you know, design the internals and externals and all that stuff. So that's Steam and why we're adding art. So. Why I think STEAM is, is becoming popular now and is making its way back into schools is we're returning to this concept of making stuff. You know, back when these guys were in the garage building things by their hands, you know, that was the 70s to maybe the early 90s, a lot of technology was about the hardware, right? We were starting to build personal computers, there was a big revolution. Um, all these guys in garages building the next generation hardware. Um, but by the late 90s, I guess like 96, um, so by 96, the, the tech sector was dominated by companies like Intel and IBM, HP, Nokia, Cisco, Motorola, right? All these guys making hardware. Um, but of course, after the hardware was there, we need a lot of software. So kind of, I think the next decade or so really came the software rev revolution. So 10 years after that, it was really Microsoft and Google and Oracle kind of leading their charge. And we had the internet taking off, and apps became a big thing, right? So there was this big focus on, on software, and we kind of didn't worry about the hardware so much anymore. Yeah? yeah. So the Steve Jobs does that. <laughs> <laughs> he is. <laughs> I'm guessing that was a, I don't remember what kind of watch he, he wore. I was going to say a calculator watch, but that's probably more like what Waz had, like a Casio or something like that, right? Um, <laughs> But so what's happened recently, and you've probably noticed this, is there's the maker movement, right? We're starting to move back into this new uh, sort of renaissance of getting back to hardware. And I think the reason for that is there's kind of really two big changes that happened. Um, first, you have the internet. 
and you have this vast access to a database of knowledge. Um, you can learn from experts in their field. I mean, you can go on and find a YouTube video or a tutorial. So if you don't know about something, you know, I don't know anything about electronics, but I can go in. You know, I didn't know anything about hardware before kind of getting into this, but I can go find videos and I can learn about circuits and how transistors work and resistors work and all that sort of stuff. And it's really easy to get access to that information now. You know, you used to have to kind of go to the library or find these real technical manuals, and sometimes they were hard to find. If you had a university library, maybe you were lucky enough to have one of those and you could find the books and information. But now we have in almost instant access to experts in science and technology and engineering and things like that. So I think that was one of the big things. So there's great uh, resources for self-learners and educators to go out and get that stuff. And then you also have access to an ever-growing uh, source of relatively inexpensive hardware and technology. You know, when Waz was building this stuff, he was running around Silicon Valley basically begging companies to give him parts, right? Because they were very expensive, hard to come by. If you wanted the good processors, you know, it wasn't easy, but now, you know, we can get high-end, multi-core, high-performance computers like an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, $15, $35. There's a, there's a little computer board called the chip that I think is eight bucks, and you see this more and more. So I think those two things are kind of leading to this sort of revolution in getting back to hardware and integrating software and making stuff. And for me, that being a computer nerd, it's really exciting, so I'm kind of very excited about this stuff. So another quote from Steve Jobs, everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And this is about um, STEM and STEAM is kind of creating approachable learning for everyone. And you know, often I think we as parents and educators don't give kids enough credit. You know, we treat them like kids instead of like peers. And it's amazing how smart kids are if you just let them be smart and don't talk down to them, you know, they don't see obstacles like we do. So they're, you know, they're very open to trying things, to learning, to failing, trying again, and they're not as jaded as some of, <laughs> some of us adults. And so if we can bring this technology into their lives early and let them use it and, you know, teach them about it and then let them and their own creativity take off, you can see some amazing things happen. So, you know, I already mentioned I got into this because my kids are homeschooled, but I'm having a heck of a lot of fun with it. And Apple's doing a pretty good job. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to apple.com slash education, um, but it's a great part of the Apple website. It has all kinds of information, tips, lesson materials for teachers, inspiration um, to kind of uh, get you excited about different areas uh, of education, technology, those things that uh, Apple is putting together. So I talked about you know, learning and STEM and STEAM is becoming more approachable. Um, you know, much of the focus of this talk is gonna be on some great kits and products and things you can get for Mac and iOS devices um, and external hardware for doing uh, STEAM-based learning projects. And um, you know, so I'm gonna show you some things that I'm into and I like, but again, the internet's a great resource if you have a particular interest. So my interest is more gonna be on the hardware side, chips and computers and, and, and programming. I'm also a, a web developer, so I'm kinda into that part of, uh, of this. Um, but if you're into you know, chemistry or physics or a lot of the, these things that I'm gonna show you can be used for those kinds of lessons too. And there's a lot of great resources online. I'll try to point you to some of them. A lot of the companies and products that I'm gonna show you um, have uh, really great uh, sites and resources that have lesson plans and tutorials and things that you can just simply download to kind of give you a starting point and then you can uh, you know, adapt. Again, I think a really important thing when you're doing STEM and STEAM uh, education is whether it's for yourself, <laughs> you know, like I said, a lot of you when you see these things, you're gonna wanna play with them and just continue your own learning, but if you have kids, you know, let them explore, kind of give them the basics the underlying thing, and then just let them take off and, and really play with this stuff, and you'll, you'll see the amazing things that they can create and share, and they'll kind of really get into it. So I brought some products to kind of show you guys. Um, the first one is something called Little Bits. Has anybody heard of Little Bits? So this is a kit here. You can get a bunch of, a bunch of them. Um, I have this thing, it's called the Smart Home Kit. And this one's all about uh, creating little hardware products that you can also download software for with these little snap together 
snap together modules. So it might be hard to see, but because these things are tiny. But what you have is you have, um, they're in, and they're color coded. So this one's a blue power bit. So this is a power thing. And then you have pink ones that are inputs. So like this is a little, little push button. And they're magnetized. And so what you do, and you can't hook them up wrong because they're magnetized, snap them together, and you build circuits with the little, little bits. And when you want to bring in software and technology, they have uh, certain input bits, like there's an MP3 bit. This is what's called a cloud bit, which will let you take this, hook it up to your home Wi-Fi, and then there's an app on the iPhone, and we'll get to a demo part a little bit later, and I can maybe show you some of the stuff if we still have time. Um, but you can control it with like, if this, then that, or the app itself. You can even write, uh, you know, take it to the point of writing Swift code. And what's great about a lot of these tools is that they start out real basic, but they allow you to kind of grow and get more and more advanced. As a matter of fact, this one here, how many people know what an Arduino is? It's a little basic computer board with a multi-core processor. This is actually an Arduino bit. So it has you know, input, inputs and outputs as well as power, and you can actually use your Mac and the Arduino app to write code and software uh, to actually program it. And you can do all kinds of things. And so like these have logic gates, they have sound speakers, they have input switches, dip switches, readout, you know, here's an LCD readout one that's a counter We'll also show you voltages and stuff like that. So again, if you want to see this stuff, I'm going to be around uh, out there, and you can come check it out and play with it, and I can show you how, how some of it works. And again, that's what we're going to be doing in the breakout session a little bit later. So little bits are really kind of a fun educational tool if you want to get into you know, circuit making and programming and, and those sorts of things. Very approachable. And again, it's just a fun toy that you can let the kids play with. So you're doing education. You're, you know, you're playing around with it. And what's great is you can introduce a concept, they can play around with it, and then you can add to that. And you can come back and you can ask questions. And so a lot of it's about just the education of sort of problem solving and learning. You know, why didn't this work? Or, you know, why didn't that work? And going from there. So how many people know what a Sphero is? So this is another fun one. This is uh, from a company called Sphero. Uh, this is, they have a whole line of products, and what it is is it's a Bluetooth-enabled uh, remote-controlled ball that you can control with your iPhone. And uh, this also has a bunch of apps and things that you can use to do uh, simple programming tasks. And, and another great thing about the Sphero is because it's a ball, you can uh, create lessons like, okay, let's do some programming and let's map out a maze on the floor. So you tape out a maze on the floor, and you have the kids put the ball down, and they go into the, into the app. And a lot of these apps have um, what's called a, uh, I'm going to get the name of it wrong. It's, it's a programming methodology, and I'll show you some of this, where uh, you just pull out little, um, it's called Sketch. And they're actually little predefined blocks of code that you just sort of link together, almost like Legos. And so you can have them uh, pull out one that says, OK, have the ball roll forward for 10 seconds, and then turn 180 degrees and roll that way for a few seconds. And what you'll find when you're, when you're doing that is it has other things, right? It's a physical ball. So you know, if you were writing in a program, the program might go 10 steps and turn, and that's fine. But when you have a physical object, other factors start to come in, and you have an opportunity to teach things like physics. So you have friction. You know, What kind of floor is it on, and how does that affect how the ball's moving, or inertia. So I'm trying to go that way and then that way, but it's not really working right. So they can do problem solving skills. And they just think they're playing, right? But as they're playing, they can see the physical thing. OK, I tried to make it go that way. It went too far. And then you have now a teaching opportunity to say, well, do you know why it went too far? No, I don't really know. Well, there's this thing called inertia, right? And then you can talk about inertia, that concept, or friction, and things like that. So again, this is all about kind of making learning and technology fun. It came on. <laughs> if you shake it, it turns on. Hopefully, it'll turn off and not roll off the table on me. <laughs> all right, this one's really cool. Um, how many people uh, are, is anybody here who is an actual game developer? You, you build games? No one here? How many people here wanted to be a game developer at some point? I, I know I did. I was programming, programming basic games on my Apple II, right? 
And so you're like, oh, I want to I want to make Mario, right? And I want to do that. Um, so Pixel Press, uh, ProjectPixelPress.com, is a really cool thing for making your own side-scrolling 2D video games on an iPad. And what they send you, this is actually a company out of St. Louis, what they send you is graph paper. And the way this works is there's all kinds of different symbols. I just have a real basic one on here. Um, but you have three levels. So each one of these things represents a level in, in the game. And they give you a little card, and there's different symbols that represent goals and coins and, and platforms. And if you shade it in a certain way, the platform will move up and down. If you shade it in, an, in another way, the floor surface becomes a hazard, like lava that you have to jump over. You know, and you draw another symbol, and it's a character, and another symbol that's a goal. And so you draw out your whole game, and then what you do is you take the iPad, and you take the camera, you open up the app, you hold it over, it scans in the paper, and it turns your game into a playable game. And they have themes and characters that you can load into it, so you can change your theme, so if you want a jungle theme or... Um, but then what's great is you can learn sort of the inter iterative uh, process of building a game, of doing, uh, you know, you do your design and you think, I've got this perfect game. And you go in, you scan it, and you start, you test it. And then within the app, you can come back and you can see, okay, I can't make that leap, that's too far, I've got to adjust this part of the game, or that's not really fun, it's too challenging, or that's not challenging enough. And um, it makes, you know, getting into game design, again, really fun and approachable and you're learning about all these concepts of doing these iterative uh, things. So that one's a lot of fun as well. All right, this is another one. We're gonna talk a lot about Arduino. Remember I said I'm really into like technology and programming and stuff like that. So this one is called the Light Blue Bean and it's a little tiny Arduino. One of the things with Arduinos, um, is they have an app for the Mac, and I was looking for a solution for iOS, because my kids have iPads and things like that. And I just got this, I was on vacation, I was hoping it was gonna come earlier, so I haven't had too much time to play around with this one. But I don't know if you'll be able to see this. It's super tiny. It's got a little coin cell battery on the back. But what's amazing about this is on this little device itself, it actually has Bluetooth, so you can connect it to your iOS device. They have a little app and you can download our Arduino programs right onto it, but also on this is an accelerometer, an RGB LED that you can control, and a temperature sensor. So this is kind of cool for science projects. You know, you could put it outside and monitor the temperature and have it, you know, send information and data back to um, your iOS device and, you know. But not only that, it still has um, GPIO input-output pins, it has serial pins on here that you can connect things to, so you can connect this back to like a terminal and get uh, more information and data off of it. And this is more about kind of programming. You can write simple programs, and then again, you can kind of teach some concepts like logic loops and you know, if-then statements and all that sort of thing. So this one's a little bit more advanced because it doesn't have that um, sort of sketch coding methodology, but what's amazing about this to me is how many sensors and things are packed and just on board onto this little tiny thing that I can uh, connect via Bluetooth to my device. And then the last app that we're gonna talk about is one called Tickle. So I, I kinda showed you the, the Bean, right? And I showed you the Sphero. Um, how many people know about Parrot AR drones? You know, little flying drones and spiders and, and things like that. So these are all toys, or hue, hue bulbs, right? Anybody here have hue bulbs? So you, if you have hue bulbs or home automation, you might want to, you know, you have an app that you control that stuff with. What Tickle is, is it's a very approachable, again, this kind of nodal, uh, modular, sketch-based way of programming things um, that can also, you can write basically iOS apps. And what's amazing about uh, Tickle is it gives you access to the accelerometers and all the sensors and things that are on your iPad. So you can write programs and you can get input from the tilt sensors 
And so you could write a program and it gives you little characters and things that you can put into a space and you can start to control them and move them around. And you can, uh, it has, uh, you know, you can detect when uh, the iPad is, sh you shake the iPad or you tilt the iPad or any of those sorts of things and you can, con can control all that stuff. Not only that, they have integration with things like the Bean and the Sphero. And so you can write programs, your own programs, that actually control those things. So if you want to change the color of that RGB LED on the little Arduino bean or the, the, the LEDs that are in the Sphero, you can control those and you can get data back. And it is, again, another great place. They have a lot of community projects um, that focus on teaching robotics and math and art and engineering and things like that. So let's do, let's do a couple little quick demos. Hopefully, if my, if my Wi-Fi works out. So we'll start with the, because I think we have time, right? Does anybody have any questions at this point about any of this stuff? Maybe we should take some questions real quick. Yeah. Okay, so this, the Sphero is about 100, everything's kind of about 100 bucks. The little bits, you know, you can buy individual bits, so they have a whole, they have a whole range. They range from starter kits around 50 bucks, but you can buy individual modules for you know, 10, 20, $20. So if you have a specific project, and what's great about um, uh, the little bits is if you go on their website, um, they will have projects and they have a community, so people will develop projects. Like I've seen uh, projects because they have like a fan motor, so there's a project for like building a little bubble blower, right? And what's great on those projects is it'll list out all of the components that you need to order to actually build that project. So you could go project by project and sort of build your library. Um, Little Bits is really great. They have a, they have a community thing where um, at maker spaces and things like that or at schools, you can get a, a program. Oh, and that's the other thing. Almost all of these companies have an education program, so you can get education pricing. Um, they have kits that go together. I know Sphero with the Spark, they have specific classroom kits that you can get um, you know, that are designed for education and stuff like that. Um, so they're all about 100 bucks. I think the, the Pixel Press, I don't remember. Oh, and the other thing about Pixel Press, it's not out. I was hoping, I, I reached out to the company. Um, they have a new version of the, of the game system that is actually a uh, 13 by 13 plastic grid with little colored blocks that you actually lay out. It's kind of more art focused. It's called Bloxels. It's supposed to be out this month. I haven't followed up to see if it's quite out yet. Um, but it's the same kind of concept. You build, you can do character designs, so you can do a 13 by 13 uh, pixel character on it to create your own characters that'll go in your game, but then also the colored blocks represent different parts of your game level. So you build out your game level actually by putting little physical cubes in a 13 by 13 grid and then taking pictures and sort of building out your game. So it's kind of the next iteration of this. This, this one's called Floors is, is the app. And they also did, uh, I'm not into it, but. Uh, uh, there was a Cartoon Network show called Adventure Time. Anybody know Adventure Time? So Pixel Press has an ad ad Adventure Time version of the, the Floors game. I haven't, I haven't messed with it, so I don't, I don't know much about it. But yeah, it's, it's all ranging somewhere from $50 to $100. The, the, the light blue bean is like $35. And again, if you get into Arduinos or Raspberry Pis and things like that, there's just this whole range of uh, prices. Any other questions before? We try to do a little demo. We'll see if I can get this guy, this guy connected up, and we'll see if I can airplay, so you can actually see what's going on here. If my Bluetooth is working, this is the t this is this is the part of the demo that you know we all fear because this is where technology comes into play. Uh, let me get out of this and see if I can get the mirroring going. It was working earlier, there we go. So that part worked. Now we gotta see if we can connect to the Sphero here. It was connected earlier, but it seems to have lost its Bluetooth, Bluetooth connection. Oh, it says it's connected. I don't know why it's flashing like that. So this is, this is the Sphero app, and I'm just gonna go through some of the, uh, 
whoops, it's going into driving mode. Um, I'm gonna go through some of the programs and we'll see if this program works. So this is a little, uh, I think it's a built-in program. I don't remember if I wrote this one or not. Um, but here you can kind of see this, this, what I was talking about, I call it kind of a nodal or a sketch-based uh, programming. You have these little modules that you can pull out along the bottom. And they usually have them separated into individual categories. So these are actions. So you see I have a roll action and I have a set speed action. It might be hard to read there. Um, a stop action. And all you have to do to program these things is you kind of pull the little module out and you just click it into place, right? And so then it has settings I can tap on here. So this is a roll module, so I can tap here and I say, I want it to roll for five seconds, right? And then you can set the heading and the speed and the direction. I think the second thing is the speed. So we probably want it to go a little faster than zero. So maybe let's have it go 90. And we'll just let it go zero degrees, which should be, which should be the front heading. Let me just see if, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so with the Sphero, you bring up this interface and this little blue, they call this the tail, this little blue dot. So that's the back of the Sphero. And so you just scroll around on here and that's gonna tell it which direction to go in. And I'm gonna take this, uh, this roll command out of here. So you just drag it out and move it up to the top and you trash it. Because this program should, it's supposed to make this thing go in a square when I hit play. So when I hit start, what should happen is this thing should drive in a square, and I think as it gets to each corner, it changes color. So we'll see how it, we'll see how it goes. Oh, he made it. <laughs> so what, what I was, what I, this, and I remember, I, this is a program I did do with my kids. We were trying to figure out, okay, how can we get it to actually make a perfect square and kind of hit every corner? So, you know, one fun thing you might do is you might put out, like, Dixie cups or something upside down and see if you can knock each one down. You know, you could build a bowling game or whatever. But again, what you can talk about when you're, when you're doing these lessons is, you know, things like inertia and, and uh, you know, friction and, and all those sorts of things. And of course, this has, if you turn it sideways, it just has, it just has a drive mode, too, where you can, looks like he turned off. You're supposed to be able to tap him. He might have died. Oh, there we go. It has a drive mode, and you can just drive it for fun. So Sphero has a bunch of these that are just, you know, like a toy. And what's cool is, again, you know, the other app like Tickle, you can write all your home programs. So a lot of people know about the BB-8 Spiro, you know, the little one that looks like BB-8. They're all the same, you know, it's all the same thing. So whichever one you wanna get, if you prefer BB-8, you can still use this education app with BB-8. And I guess I should probably also show you, you can go in here and you can actually look at, so they have this code called oval code. So you can actually go in and see the code that's underlying this. In this app itself, I don't think you can hand edit, directly edit the code, but they do have another app where you could write all the code from scratch, and they have a coding library, and you can go online, and you can see all the different functions and commands. So like, you can start your kids out with a little, you know, nodal thing, and then progress them into code. Yeah. Uh, this is specifically their language, it's called Oval. So it's something that Sphero developed, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't remember what the underlying language is. It, it might be Objective C. I don't. I don't to, you can maybe, maybe someone can look at it and reveal. A lot of times it's like JavaScript or it's Java or like I think Arduino is is like Java. Is it C based? Yeah. I don't. There's there's a couple different ways to kind of do that stuff. I don't think you can actually get the script. You just Yeah, it's just Bluetooth. This is yeah Bluetooth LE. So iPhone, iPad, yeah. So how are we doing on time? Am I done? 10.20, I'm supposed to be done? All right, so I, like I said, I have more things. That's only, that's only one demo. If you wanna see the little bits or the pixel press or whatever, uh, you know, come find me. Let's just finish up. I got a couple, two more slides. All right, so homework. So if you're coming to my session later, Download and install the Tickle app on your iOS device. It's tickleapp.com, or you can just search for Tickle on the App Store. Um, and they have it for iPhone or iPad, so I'm assuming most of you probably have an iPhone or an iPad with you, um, or I'm hoping. And come back for part two at 4.30. I think I'm on this stage, and we're gonna, we're gonna do some programming with the Tickle app. 
And there's a little reveal at the end. I'm going to tease you. At the end, I'm going to show you something really cool, and you're going to be impressed by, uh, by the work you do. So this is me, Adam Christensen. I do a podcast called the MacCast, which you can find at maccast.com if you're into podcasts, if you're not already listening. Uh, I'm Mac at MacCast on Twitter, and that's my email address. So if you have additional questions uh, about this stuff or anything else, you can just email me there. And I respond to all my emails. So that's it. Thank <laughs> you.